What's up, people? Welcome back to my channel, where we've been talking about Mark Sixes lately. And these are pretty much my, close to my ending results and what I've discovered. So this whole thing has been a learning process for me, and I hope it's been a learning process for you, because when it all boils down to it, this whole thing started out with me going to my repairman and picking up a horn to use while he was fixing my horn. In the middle of all that, it turned into me thinking about getting a secondary horn but at the same time also it was about some education for myself and for my viewers so first i want to say all these videos that you've been watching have been done a week before you see them at this point right now i've had the 121 for almost three weeks there was a honeymoon phase for that first week like i was over the moon and then the second week it changed and then the third week it changed so i'm going to talk about that and I'm going to talk about the findings throughout this whole thing. Starting where we left off, the 121,000 horn. The reason I was over the moon is because it had a lot of the characteristics of my horn. The fingerboard, the way that it sounded deep and mellow and the lower frequencies of the sound. It was closer to my horn and that's mostly because the 140 had 50 year old pads on it. First of all, it got 50 year old pads on it and the action on it was so far from my horn that it was hard to adjust to. When I had the 121 for the first day, I was like, man, when he, when my horn's ready, I'm going in, I'm going to buy this horn. As time went on, I started to find certain things in it where it slightly lacked. You know, I know I made jokes in my video about it's nothing wrong with the way it sounds, but playing it for a certain amount of time made me realize some things. When I look at the 121, my horn, and the 140, there's some things that, that I observe. So when you think about the 121, it is a Mark VI in the 120,000 range serial number. My horn is a Mark VI in the 130,000 range, and the 140 is in the 140,000 range serial number. So we got three different serial numbers that's close to each other. The 121 has nylon resonators, my horn has flat resonators, and the 140 has ceramodomed resonators. The 120 has decent pads, but it can use an overhaul. My horn has decent pads, but it needs an overhaul, and the 140 has poor pads, 50 years old, and it needs an overhaul. With those different dynamics going on together, it makes it easier for me to assess what it is I've been hearing. That 121 has a lush mellowness to it. It's deep sounding, pure. The 140 more colors in the mids and upper register, but it didn't have this much of a deepness to it. Could that be because it need an overhaul? I think it getting the overhaul will basically increase what it is already. All the pads cover the tone holes. It'd probably be stronger, but it's not going to change the DNA of the horn itself. It's still going to be what it is. You know, it's just going to be more defined. And the same with the 121. Like I said, I was over the moon in that first video of the 121. I was like, man, I love this horn. Like I might have to get this horn, but it made me forget about my horn and what it already is. Being that I can't physically play my horn the only thing that i had to result to which i forgot about was oh i know i'll just look at the youtube videos that i've done and i went back and listened and i realized the very things that i like about the 121 my horn does already but it also has this sparkle on top that the 140 has so i got the thing and i was like wait a minute let me listen to another video i listen to another and another and it's consistent that my horn does maintain this mellowness and I said that in the video about the 121, but it also has those characteristics of the 140. So it makes my horn very versatile. Now, when I'm talking about these horns, this is my opinion and my experience playing them. Yours may differ. Your ears may differ. Your setup in combinations with these horns may differ. But with me and what I've been playing like and my setup and everything, these are my observations and my opinion. So it doesn't make it 100% right. It just makes it my opinion. Another thing to say about these three horns, one of them is unlacquered, one of them is silver plated, and one of them is lacquered. Some people believe these things make a difference, some don't. I think that it does. I think it makes a, a minor difference between the three. So, okay, if I owned one of these other Mark Sixes and my horn, which one would I play? And the question is why? Well, the 121, I feel as though for me, 
is a straight ahead horn, straight ahead jazz. I would really want to use that horn in small group or big band jazz scenarios. The 140, it can do that, but it also can do like more commercial type of music, more so than the 121. But the 121 lends itself more to straight ahead jazz than commercial type music. Then there's my horn. Based on the way that they are right now with my setup, I can use my silver horn in any situation. Jazz, straight ahead, gospel, pop, R&B, neo soul, whatever. It, I'm able to manipulate it in a certain way where it can camouflage itself with the same setup regardless of the genre. That made a light bulb go off in my head. If I had this 121, though I like it so much, I'm coming to a conclusion that my horn is still the best horn for me. You know, been playing it for 15 years and it has the best of what I liked about that 121 and it got the best of what I liked about the 140 and I already own it. You know, so it kind of makes me kind of sit back and say, do I really need to get this horn? Don't you need a computer? My laptop over here is a 2012 MacBook Pro. It's been on its last leg, getting to 10 years. That's a bit long for a laptop. I'm like, man, I could use a laptop. I could use a camera lens, which I have right now, shooting with right now. I bought a new camera lens. I need a new microphone for my camera. I need that warranty for that MacBook Pro. I'm gonna need a better video editing software because the only thing I'm using is iMovie. I would like to have Final Cut Pro. Now I started adding these all, all these things up. Oh, I need an overhaul on my horn. Hmm, I'm gonna have to pay a cost for the repairs that's been done on my horn that's been getting done for the past few weeks. I'm, I'm gonna have to, and the only reason why it's taking so long because of COVID protocols and things like that. So. I got to pay to pick up my horn. I need to pay to have an overhaul. I need to pay to have camera lens. I need to pay for a computer, a warranty for a computer, software. Computer. I, all these things start adding up. I'm like, but I'm going to spend all this money on this horn and it still is going to need an overhaul too. So this has been the learning experience for me. But for you, I hope it's been educational because you have seen some things of what you need to look for when you're thinking about getting a vintage instrument. So let's just take my situation out of the equation. Let's say you want a Mark VI and you may not have a beneficial situation as I do where I know somebody personally who's going to let me play these horns. Some people out there selling horns do let you take them on a trial. But being that we're in the COVID area right now, some people may not want you to do that at all. So if you can't do that at all, especially if you're thinking about you on eBay looking at buying a horn, you really limit it from what you can do to assess that horn outside of looking at pictures. And that is dangerous on eBay. I would recommend if you're buying a horn to try to buy it in person. And if you can, try to take it on trial. And if you can, look it over. You know, because all that stuff I pointed out on the 140 and the 121, I found even more stuff that that's after the video I made. Stuff on the 121, I can see dent removals. The instrument been straightened out in a couple of areas. I can see that. All those things will start to make the price do like that. Because you're kind of like, hey, you asking for this much for this horn? Okay, I see a neck tenon and a receiver replacement. It has no lacquer. It has all these soldering jobs on there. Now I see dent removal. It needs an overhaul. It needs a chemical clean. And you start adding all that stuff up. And the price that's being asked of it, negotiation got to go into play. The learning experience for you, I hope, has been don't just play a horn and fall in love with it. Look it over and say, hmm, they want how much? Okay, these things need to be taken into consideration. But if you already got something that you're in love with, yeah, it may be beneficial. You got more than one Mark 6. I know people with three or four Mark 6s, but they constantly play a certain one all the time. And the other ones, they just sit around. But right now, in this particular moment, I think the number one thing for me to do is get my horn back, get it overhauled, and then somewhere down the road, look at another one. Maybe it might be the 121, but right now, yeah, I just can't justify it right now. I can't. And I own, already own a Mark VI tenor that I'm going to use all the time. But hopefully this has been educational for you as it has been for me, because it has been educational for me. I still got the 121 right now. I still got to play it for at least another week. Right now, I'm anticipating getting my horn back, especially after looking at some of my other videos and I realize, oh man, the, the stuff that I like about this horn, my horn does. I'm pretty much got it figured out. You know, again, the way that this started out was for me to get a horn while my horn's getting fixed. 
that seems to be maybe where it's ending at. I'm ready to get my horn back. But I appreciate y'all for watching. And I will see y'all soon. The next video is probably going to be like the return of the Silver Surfer. Because it's getting... By the time you watching this video, I already have my horn back. And I'm already trying to get back used to it. I'm sure of it. By the time this, by the time this video is published, I'll be getting back used to my horn. So... All right, guys, I appreciate y'all and take care. Peace.